And with that, I'd like to welcome in Mark Dubowitz, the CEO for the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Mark is an expert in the Middle East. And in fact, in 2019, he was sanctioned by Iran, the regime accusing him of being the designing and executing arm of the U.S. administration on Iran policy. Mark, welcome to the show. It's an honor to have you here for our special. Thanks so much, Lindsay. Okay, so I want you to help us set the table and give us a better understanding of who Hamas really is, an overview of their goals and their mission. Yeah, so Hamas uh, really didn't just come out of nowhere uh, three weeks ago. They actually were founded in 1988 by uh, someone called Sheikh Yassin. And they were founded uh, with an explicit goal of, of exterminating Jews around the world. It's actually in their founding charter, uh, which is really a, just a vile anti-Semitic document. And it wasn't just about rhetoric. Uh, in the 1990s and the 2000s, I actually spent time living in Israel, and Hamas was responsible for uh, pretty vicious terrorist attacks against Israelis. In fact, they, Hamas terrorists were strapping suicide belts to their bodies. They were filling those suicide belts with nails dipped in rat poison. And they were walking into, into schools, into discos, into cafes, on buses. Um, and in, in that period of time, a 1,000 Israelis were killed, thousands of Israelis maimed by Hamas and other terrorist organizations. So Hamas has been killing Israelis, killing Jews for uh, 35 years. Hamas likes to pose themselves as a national movement for Palestinians, but is it? Look, it, in some respects it is. I mean, I think it's a very uncomfortable fact that we, we like to try to distinguish Hamas from the Palestinians. Um, in some cases, that's, that's correct. And not all Palestinians are pro-Hamas, but a lot of Palestinians are pro-Hamas. And, and Palestinians uh, in Gaza, in the West Bank, and around the world have provided significant support. I mean, it's, it's worth remembering, as, yeah, as you know, that Hamas actually came to power in Gaza by winning an election. So they, they won Palestinian votes. They then took over. Um, and then it was a brutal civil war where they, they turned their guns on uh, more moderate Palestinian groups, threw Palestinians from rooftops, sh shot them in the kneecaps. Uh, so they've certainly been brutal and murderous against fellow Palestinians. Hamas has uh, ruled that territory for over 15 years in a brutal way. They've only brought death and destruction and poverty and misery to, to that territory. They've taken, you know, billions of dollars in humanitarian aid, um, and they've turned that into into terrorist infrastructure. Right? I mean, actually, cement that comes into into Gaza, uh, particularly from the Egyptian side of the border, Hamas has taken that cement and created not homes and schools and hospitals as you would expect any responsible governing authority to do so. They built a network of hundreds of kilometers of terrorist tunnels underneath Gaza for uh, Hamas terrorists and weapons. And they're hiding their fighters and their weapons in those tunnels. Unfortunately, those tunnels are not available to, for Palestinians as bomb shelters. Why don't they care for their own people? It seems like they would at least want to bring their own people along with them. Look, I, I think at the end of the day, you know, there are, there are certain people, um, there are certain uh, organizations that value life, and then there are there are death cults that value death. I mean, we are, unfortunately, um, it's not just Islamists who've demonstrated that. We have the 20th century with the Nazis, uh, with Soviet communism, with Chinese communism, right, where we've had movements, ideologies, di dictatorial regimes that were death cults, and they didn't value the life of their people. They didn't look to improve the welfare of their people. They were committed to using their people in order to advance a genocidal ideology. And, and so in the 20th century and now the 21st century should be a screaming example of, of what happens when we as a civilization, as Western civilization, face these death cults who are, who are committed to death, not to life. Let's talk about Iran specifically because a lot of attention is on them right now because they are one of the largest funders of Hamas. And it was interesting because after the horrific terrorist attacks on Israel on October 7th, uh, Iran's supreme leader he came out and said that we kiss the hands of those who planned this attack and just goes to showing what you've been saying, Mark. Are they just hoping that Hamas 
plays out their goals to wipe Israel off the map? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the Iran Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei um, is a, uh, a vicious dictator, but he's also incredibly strategic. And he has had a long-standing plan to surround Israel with, uh, with a ring of fire on every border. So he has supported terrorist organizations and uh, allowed uh, Hezbollah, Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, the Iraqi Shiite militias in Iraq, the Houthis in Yemen. What he's done is he's shipped fighters and, and weapons and trained them, and directed them, and supported them in order to create this ring of fire so Israel is surrounded on every border. And then what he does is he, he lights up borders. And so for the Supreme Leader, he looks at this as a, as a chessboard, uh, a rather, rather deadly and macabre chessboard, and he's playing these various pieces. And for him, Hamas is just one piece. And again, he, if he can fight Israel to the last dead Palestinian in Gaza, that's perfectly in line with his strategy. It's such a complicated scenario that we see unfolding before us. Mark Dubowitz, we appreciate your expertise in helping us understand these deep-rooted um, hatreds from uh, these regimes and these terrorist organizations. Thank you for being with us tonight.